Welcome, so thank you guys for coming out to Exodus uh, today and uh, just joining us for our service. And we just hope, again, as we said before, that this time is a time where we can really engage with God, you know, and be with Him in His Word and worship and our fellowship with each other. And uh, we're continuing on with the series that we're doing in Acts right now, which is really, I think, really awesome and really, to think, really good to think about as a church together. Uh, but before that, a couple of announcements. One, we're having our Silence and Solitude half-day retreat. If you don't know what that is, is we take about you know half of the day, half day, um, and we go out to uh, we go out to this one park, um, and we just have some like prayer exercises and things to do to just kind of sit and and kind of quiet down life, you know, quiet down all of our thoughts so that we can really hear and see and, and know what God might be saying to us and wanting to say to us. And it's a really intimate time. It's really I think just a really foundational time for, um, for us to just be able to be with God. And so I really want to encourage you guys to do that. I know that sometimes some people think that's like kind of weird or different. You know, like what? You're going to spend half of a day just like sitting there and praying? Like that's crazy, right? And it's, it sounds a little bit weird, but trust me, it's kind of awesome. And so I just want to encourage you guys to uh, be open to that. If you are, uh, please talk to me um, and uh, we'll sign you up. We, we do provide lunch. And, uh, yeah, it's a good time. Also, we are going on our missions trip uh, June 17th, 29th. If you are on the fence or have some questions about that, we're going to be in China. We work with college students. Um, and it's really, really a great time, you know, just to engage with people and talk with people. Ask anybody that's gone on the trip before. Um, I just really encourage you guys to do that. It is for people any of any age over 10th grade. Yeah. Okay? So think about it. Consider it. Talk to me if you're interested. Um, before we get into today's message, I do want to spend some time in prayer. Um, and uh, I don't know how many people of you know, but we have uh, a youth, um, Bradley, and uh, <clears throat> he was basically at a at the doctor getting a checkup or you know kind of more in depth checkup. And there was an accident that happened while he was there. Um, ended up his uh, colon was punctured. And so he had to go into an emergency surgery last week, um, and and thank God, you know, like he's okay, he's stable, I guess, and he's recovering. Um, but he's going to be in the hospital basically for this next week. Um, and so, and also, if anybody wants to go visit him, I'll I'm going to see if we can, you know, like maybe go visit him in the hospital. But if anybody wants to come with me, you can let me know after church, and we can figure something out. But we just want to pray for him, you know, um, just pray that he recovers well um, and that he, he gets better quickly. Um, and thank God, you know, that, that, that it seems like, you know, like any immediate danger he's out of. So why don't we just uh, pray together for our brother Bradley. Father God, Lord, we... We just want to thank you so much, Lord, for even protecting Bradley and, um, you know, when this, when, when that accident happened, Lord, and uh, we thank you for just uh, sustaining him, for allowing him to get through that surgery well, Lord, and, and we just want to lift him up to you, God, as he is spending this week in the hospital, and, you know, that can be very, um, just limiting, I know, uh, for him lonely, and, and God, we just want to pray, Lord, for your healing to be on his body, Lord, that you would heal, you know, the colon and any other, um, any other areas of his body that was affected uh, due to this, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you would uh, just uh, ease his discomfort, Lord, and also, God, that your presence would be with him, Lord, and easing maybe his loneliness or isolation. So we just lift him up, Lord, as, as his family, Lord, um, and we come before you as you ask us to, Lord, for your healing to be upon him. So we pray for that, we pray for this in faith, Lord, knowing that you have him in your hands, Lord, that you are in control. And we pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And without further ado, we have Daniel.
Hello, everybody. Welcome. Uh, let's open up with a word of prayer. Uh, Father God, I just uh, thank you for uh, just bringing us here. Uh, we just want to open up your word. We love your word. And we just want to learn from you. Please speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're in um, Acts chapter 2. So if you guys have your Bibles, you can open up to Acts chapter 2. Um, 1 through 13 today. 1 through 13. All right, I'm going to just read it for us, okay? Hope you guys don't mind. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 13. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. Now, when I read this, the first thing I think of is, Dude, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to speak with all these other like languages. That is so awesome. But then I think about my life and I'm like, You know what? Our church... My life doesn't really look like that at all, right? So I'm like, have I ever been filled with the Holy Spirit? And then I think of one time, or this period of time, I guess I would say, in my life, where I used to go, you know, and I would to church, and I would sing worship songs, you know, and like sometimes it would be like a really good band with really good music, and I'd just be singing, 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 raising my hands up, and the tears would start coming out, and I'd be like, oh, man. This is really touching me, and I'd be singing, you know, for those of you guys who don't know, I have like a kind of a louder voice, I guess I would say, so I would sing out really loud, loud, and then eventually it would come, like this pressing on my chest, I felt this like pressure right here, and then I'm like, oh, you know, I'm crying, I'm like singing to God about who he is and how awesome he is, I'm like, that pressure, that must mean I'm being filled with the Holy Spirit. Right? Oh, man. Great experience, right? And then one day, um, I don't know if you guys know, I used to coach um, Team United. I was, a, I, would, I was the head coach or whatever. And then, like, on game day, you know, tons of exciting action. Football, it was awesome, you know? And I'd be yelling out, like, do this, do that. And I'd be cheering. We'd be scoring touchdowns, just screaming, screaming, screaming. And then it happened. I felt this pressure on my chest, and I realized, oh shoot, that's not the Holy Spirit, it's just some sort of, I don't know, if I yell too much, or I use too much of my voice, there's like this pressure that comes on my lungs, or something like that, I'm like, ah, oh, I've been deceived this entire time, I have not been filled with the Holy Spirit, so, like, when I read this, I'm like, oh, if that's not the Holy Spirit, then what is the Holy Spirit, you know? What does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? And I just want to dive into this passage a little bit in Acts 2 and kind of figure out, you know, what does this passage really say about the Holy Spirit? What does it say about uh, to us? And is this real? You know, is the Bible actually describing something that happens for real? Or is this just some, you know, fantasy of being able to speak in the other tongues or whatever? So... Let me give you a little bit of background about um, Acts chapter 2, okay? So, Acts is actually 
volume two in like a series. It's like a sequel to another book, okay? Acts is a sequel to the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke, okay? And in the gospel of Luke, there's this guy named Luke, and he <laughs> writes to his friend named Theophilus, right? And in Acts, there's another guy named Luke, say that. And he writes to his friend named Theophilus, right? So it's volume two in this series, okay? And in the book of Luke, he talks about this guy named Jesus and how he died on the cross and rose again and his wife and stuff like that. And then in Acts, the story continues, okay? So this whole entire thing with the Holy Spirit being poured out, it's actually been described and promised before, okay? Not only in the book of Acts, but also in the book of Luke, okay? In um, Luke chapter 24, this is the end of the book of Luke, 46 to 49. It says, Jesus, he told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. So in the end of the book of Luke, he says, you're going to be my witnesses, one. He's saying, Jesus is saying this to his disciples, his followers. You're going to be my witnesses. You're going to tell people about me. But also, two, the Father is going to send power from on high. Okay? There's the two things he talks about in the end of, the Luke, of Luke, okay? In Acts chapter 1, where we, Clarence preached on this last week, okay? Jesus makes the same promise. He kind of, Luke just kind of repeats himself in the beginning. It's kind of like the recap of what happened last time. It's like, on the last episode of blah, 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 you know. So that's what Luke is doing here, okay? So Acts chapter 1, verse 4. It says, on one occasion when he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you going at this, or, oh shoot, Lord, at, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So again, it's a recap. Jesus tells them, You're going to be my witnesses. Two, I'm going to... Father is going to send you the Holy Spirit, okay, to empower you. And what happens in the passage that we just read in our passage in chapter 2? The Holy Spirit comes, okay? They are empowered. And not only are they empowered, they're preaching the gospel to the nation already in chapter 2, okay? It's already happening in chapter 2, okay? So that's kind of the background. It's that Jesus promised these things. And boom, it's happening already, okay? So, what do we learn about the Holy Spirit? Well, the Holy Spirit, remember, is tied to a mission, okay? Remember the two points. You're going to be my witnesses, and I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit to help in that mission, okay? So, the first point, actually the main point I want you guys to know today is that the Holy Spirit is tied to being Jesus' witness. It's for the purpose of being Jesus' witness. It's not so you can have an awesome experience in worship and feel something pressing on your chest, okay? It's not so that you can like just feel all these emotions or do all these awesome things for no reason. It's a specific purpose so that you can be Jesus' witness. That's what the Holy Spirit is for, okay? When I was in fifth grade, my parents bought me a computer, okay? I think it was 1989, okay? 
this computer was called, it was an Atari ST, okay? It had a color monitor, okay? And not only did it have a color monitor, it had a mouse too, okay? It was awesome, okay? It had a mouse and I could, you know, make little, I would like drag the, you know how if you drag a mouse, it'll like make a little box and it'll disappear to highlight stuff? I did that for hours on this thing. I was just like, highlight, I don't know what I was doing, okay? After I got this computer, I was just playing on this computer, but you know what? My parents didn't buy any programs for the computer. So there was like, no game, you know, all computers today come with at least like Solitaire or Minesweeper or something, right? Back then, nothing. No games, nothing. So I would just move icons around and be happy with that, right? It was really dumb, okay? I just had this computer basically for no reason, okay? But I was still really into it. But, no, 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 I, I, there actually was one program that it came with. It's kind of a notepad program, or like a word processing program. So I would open that up, I'm like, well, this is the only thing I have on this computer. Might as well do something with it. So what did I do? I just wrote stuff, right? I just started writing a bunch of stuff. I'm like, you know what I can do? I can make a newspaper. So I started writing all these newspaper articles about like the happenings of our neighborhood, you know, and like, oh, so-and-so mowed their lawn the other day, and like, I don't know if I really wrote something that dumb, but. And then I would make up stories too, and like tell like, you know, made up stories about trolls and dwarves and elves and stuff like that. So I made up all these stories. I wrote articles about the happenings of our news, um, of our neighborhood, and I put it into a newspaper and I printed it out, and it was like three pages. I was like, "This is awesome, right?" And I looked at it, and I'm like, "But it's not really a newspaper because there's no photos, there's no pictures, right?" So then I think I got, I don't know, I think I asked my sister or something to like draw some comics or something and put it in the back or whatever. So then we had some pictures, you know. And, and then I printed out 15 copies, right? And I distributed to our neighborhood, right? And then I was like, one dollar for a whole year subscription. Oh. <laughs> and our neighborhood was called Stone Canyon Ranch, right? So I named it Stone Canyon Ranch Chronicles. You know, it was like an awesome news. This all came because I wanted to use the computer for something, right? And nobody says, well, one person subscribed, right? And the worst thing about that was now I had to write three pages every month for a whole year. I was like nine or ten years old, okay? This is not an easy thing. So I was trapped, okay? But the reason why all this came about is because. I thought about computer, I want to use it first, without thinking of why the reason to get a computer was first. I just thought, my parents just got me a computer, so I'm like, I just want to use it. And kind of that's the same thing as what's happening with the Holy Spirit sometimes. When I read the text, I'm like, oh, I just want the Holy Spirit. I don't know what it's for, but I just want it, right? So when we read this text, it's a mistake to think about the Holy Spirit to think about God pouring out his spirit on Pentecost without thinking about the purpose of why he's pouring out his spirit. And his purpose is what? To help us to be witnesses, to empower us to be witnesses for Jesus, for Jesus Christ, okay? In verse 11, okay, in cha Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, 11, it says specifically, Okay? They're, they're, they're speaking on all these different languages, right? It says, We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. They didn't just get these languages and just say, Hey, what's up? And start chatting about random stuff. No, they specifically spoke in these other languages to talk about what God had done. Okay? To be Jesus' witnesses. So they were using... Their gift, the Holy Spirit was empowering them to do exactly what they were supposed to be doing, which is to be Christ's witnesses here on earth. Okay? Here on earth, for them, not only in Jerusalem, but in the entire world. Okay? So that is the purpose 
of the Spirit. We went to Macau recently in just December, me and my wife Sydney, okay? We got off the boat, we went, it's like a gambling town. Macau's in Asia, it's near Hong Kong. It's like the Vegas of, of Asia, okay? And we walked around in these huge, really gaudy looking casinos. You think the casinos in Vegas are gaudy? These ones are way flashier, way weirder looking, way just weird, okay? And then we walked a little bit and we got into like, everywhere around the casinos is just slum-like looking thing, you know? It's dirty, gross, ugh. And Cindy was walking around, she was like, ooh, I feel scared around here, oh, this place is like, oh. It's like, that is Macau. Dirty, pollution-filled with these casinos there, right? But I didn't feel that way. The reason I didn't feel that way is because I had gone on a mission trip when I was 20 years old, in the year 2000, okay? So, what, 13 years ago. And I had some experiences there that just made me have a really soft spark, spot in my heart for that city, for Macau. We taught English there. We hung out with some kids. I remember one day, it was raining, okay? And there's this one kid named Sam. And he was just hanging out with us. And I said, Sam, why don't you just come back with us to our dorm? Because it's rain. You know, we don't want to hang out in the, in the rain. So we went back to our dorm. We're talking to this kid. I was like, you know what? I'm going to share the gospel with him. I'm just going to do it. Right? And then I, so I shared the gospel with him. And when I was talking to him, I was like, oh, this, you know, I was like really not scared for some reason. Right? And I was sharing the gospel with him. And then... Kim's time at the end, I, I was like, okay, and this is what Christ did for you. And then I asked him, so do you want that? I remember being a little bit scared. I said, should I just leave it as it is? Oh, I share the gospel. It's good, right? Or should I press it? Should I ask him if he wants it? Because he was just like, oh, yeah, cool. So I asked him, is that something you want, Sam? Do you, Jesus wants you. Do you want Jesus? And he's like, um, not right now. Um, let me think about it. I was pretty disappointed, right? But, so he left, whatever. My teammates were like, dang, Daniel, you were like on fire, right? <laughs> you were like just telling it to him. You had no fear. And they were like really impressed. And I was just like, well, but he didn't really, nothing happened, right? So I was like, yeah, that was cool, but... Yeah, I did feel like that wasn't really my personality to do that, but nothing really came out of it, right? I think about two years ago, I get a Facebook request for a friendship. Who is it? Sam, right? And he says in his Facebook request, do you remember me? You led me to Christ 10 years ago. I was like, I did? <laughs> you just told me, let me think about it. No, nah, I don't know, not right now. Right? You never told me. And apparently at some point, he had accepted Christ. I looked on his Facebook feed. There's like just tons of stuff where he's talking about how awesome God is, how much he loves Jesus. I was shocked. I was shocked, you know? Like he, something had happened, you know? And God used that situation. And I look back on that now and I was like, yes, that was out of my personality. You know, it was not really my personality to really forcefully share the gospel with someone. But you know what? I think that is a time where I was actually filled with the Holy Spirit. You know? And the Spirit gave me boldness to step out of what I normally did for a specific purpose to witness for Christ. Okay? I didn't know what was the effects of it. I wasn't, you know, I thought nothing came of it. But God used His Word. You know? God used his word to make something happen, you know. Um, so, that I think is, okay, so the last aspect that I want to share with you about this is verse 13, okay. In verse 13 it says, or let's start with 12. 12 it says, amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. 
okay? The last aspect of this is that the world is probably not going to understand, okay? The world is probably, not, a lot of times, not everyone is going to understand you. Verse 13 says that some people made fun of the disciples. When they say made fun, I think of like when I was in third grade and kids would go, yeah, 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 you're, they would call me lowly because my last name is Daniel Lowe, right? And make fun of me like that. I'm like, oh, that, that's what it conjures up in my mind, made fun. Um, but the thing is, if you're a person that's scared of being made fun of, you're never going to be able to step out and put yourself in Jesus' mission. You're never going to be able to witness for him. And if you're never going to be his witness, you're never, sorry to say this, you're never going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, because again, filling with the Holy Spirit is for that specific purpose. Okay? I do remember another time um, when I was in high school, and I had a neighbor. I knew he was not a believer. And I would walk home from school with him every day. And it just so happened that day, I felt like God was saying to me, hey, talk to James and share the gospel with him. All of a sudden, there was an apple in my throat. I was like, you know, I have to share with him. And, you know, and I continued walking along. I'm like, and nothing came out. And I kept walking, okay, give me a couple minutes. <clears throat> I can't do it, right? And I didn't share with him. And I never shared with him the gospel. And I thought, you know, okay, well, I missed my opportunity. I don't know if that was really God or not, you know, whatever. Now I look back and I think about Sam and how I did share the gospel with him. And I was like, that's a huge missed opportunity with James. I don't know what would have happened. I don't know, you know, I have no idea if anything would have happened, but God could have worked. I was too scared, right? And today I feel like sometimes I'm afraid of being called a religious nut job or, uh, or a Jesus freak, right? Or um, a Christian extremist. I hear those words being thrown about all the time. And you know what? Those words are just going to, that's just going to happen. It's not that we need to go out and be a type of Christian that people will never call us a nut job. That's not what the type of Christian lives we're supposed to live. We're not supposed to live so skillfully that people will think we're just cool, normal people who love God and love you. It's not like that. People are going to think we're religious nut jobs. That's just the way it is. The disciples, people thought they were they were drunk. They got made fun of. If we are going to actually witness for Christ, if we're going to actually obey what the Bible says and what Jesus has commanded us to do, we are going to be made fun of. We are going to be called nut jobs, freaks. It's just part of the vocation. And if we're not willing to accept that, if we're always trying to avoid that label, we're never going to be able to step into Christ's mission and be filled with the Holy Spirit and see what he can actually do. To witness the power of what he can actually do. Okay? The disciples here stepped out. They were filled with the Spirit. And they were used by God to do something amazing. Okay? Which is to witness for Christ. All right, application, okay? The first thing I want you guys to do, first thing I want you guys to think about doing at least, is to put yourself in God's mission. This can mean a lot of different things, but one of the main ways I want you guys to think about this is just tell somebody about Christ, you know? Tell somebody. It's very simple. I admit to you that I have been scared to do this. You know, even though I had that experience with Sam, and I've, I've witnessed to a couple people, you know, probably like a real telling someone of the gospel, maybe total five or six times. But like half of them I've known come to Christ. It's weird. And I don't do it more. It's so weird. I don't know why. So I put myself in this boat. We need to tell people about Christ. We need to just tell them the gospel and ask them, is this something you want? 
Okay? That's one way you can put yourself in God's mission. Another way is to pray for people. Pray for their healing. Pray for their... And go out on a limb to do it. Okay? Pray for something you're scared to pray for. I know sometimes I'm scared to pray that so-and-so will be healed. So-and-so will be healed this week because what if they're not healed? Then, oh shoot, what does that mean? I, I, I have to question my faith and all this stuff. Sometimes I'm scared to pray of that stuff because of that. But you need to be not scared. You need to be not scared to witness to people. You need to be not scared to pray or not. I mean, maybe you're still going to be scared, but fight through it and do it anyway. You know what I mean? Because that is when you're going to hear. That's when you're going to see the Spirit fill you with power. And you're going to see God do awesome things. If you don't put yourself in situations where you're scared, you're never going to see God. Okay? Um, preach the word to each other. Last thing, one of the other ways you can put God, yourself in God's mission is not just witnessing to other people who don't know God, but witness to each other. And go out again on a limb to do this. Say something that you feel scared about saying. Because if you don't step out of your comfort zone again to say what Christ has actually done for you in your life, you're not going to see God fill you with His Spirit. You're not going to see Him work. Okay? So put yourself in God's mission. There's a ton of other ways besides these ways that I've mentioned. You can ask Clarence about going on a mission trip. You know, I went on a mission trip to Macau. That's one of the ways I saw God. Okay? It, it takes a lot of money. You have to fly across the country. You have to speak to people you don't know. It's scary sometimes, but because it's scary, that's how you know you're putting yourself on a limb, out on a limb for Christ. Okay? The next thing is, remember what Clarence said last week. We need to just be waiting and prayerfully waiting for God to fill us. Okay? To fill us with His Spirit. Um, and the third thing is, we're gonna, we have a series in Acts. Okay? We're preaching through Acts. And Acts talks a lot about the Spirit, talks a lot about the filling of the Holy Spirit. You're going to learn more. I just told you one small part about what it means to be filled by the Holy Spirit today. Okay? And that's the, that it has a mission. But keep your mind open. Be interested in what the rest of the book of Acts is going to say. Because it's going to talk about all these awesome ways. And it's going to describe who the Spirit is and how the Spirit um, can fill you, can let you know, um, can power you, can give you boldness, right? And sometimes it's not going to be miraculous. It's just going to be boldness. It's going to be being able to preach uh, forcefully. But sometimes it may be, you don't discount the miraculous also, okay? Um, let's pray. Father God, I just thank you for who you are. I thank you that you've um, chosen us to be your witnesses, in all of the world, Lord. And I just thank you that um, you've given us this book, Acts, and that we can see how your gospel, how your witnesses um, just went from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. Lord, and we just really anticipate and look forward to just seeing um, your spirit work in their lives, Lord. And Lord, I just ask you, I pray that you would send your spirit to fill us, to empower us, to give us boldness, to give us passion for your word, for us to understand grace and just be able to share with others, Lord. I pray this in your name. Amen.